everybody. Jim Dandy here for LearnMQL4.com where you can learn how to program your own scripts, custom indicators, and expert advisors using the MQL4 programming language. I thought I would uh, pick up where I left off last week on our little tool that we made to tell whether uh, we were looking at our live VPS shot or that we just looking at a frozen picture. If you uh, saw the video last week, that I did. Uh, we wrote this simple little indicator here and all that it does, let me bring it up here, the way we left it was like this with it flashing the open high low close here. You can see this flashing up here and this lets us know that we are actually seeing a live chart. If uh, we were looking at a VPS, uh, for those of you that are not familiar with how to use a VPS, a virtual private server is like a remote computer somewhere out there on the internet that doesn't have a monitor hooked to it. You connect to it and your monitor shows that computer. You look on your monitor at the computer that you have your EAs and things running on. Your platforms are open and if something happens to where you're sitting there looking at that monitor and you lose connection, you lose interconnection at your house, internet connection, and you look at your monitor over there and you will see what your VPS looked like the last time that a picture came in from it through your internet that has now quit and you don't realize you're looking at a frozen picture. It's much like taking a security camera somewhere, if somebody wants to rob somewhere, they want to steal something, they'll go out there and they'll hack into the video line coming from the camera there, this is a security camera, and they'll just insert a picture of the hallway with nobody in the hallway or maybe a looping video or something like that and they're not looking at the real thing, they're just looking at a picture. Well that's what you can be doing, you can be sitting and looking at your VPS and unless you're really paying close attention and notice that, hey, um, I haven't seen a tick come in for a while. I haven't seen the price change for a while now. And you get down and you look, you, you reach up there and you try to like change the time frame or something on the VPS. You click on the mouse and none of the buttons work and then you realize, hmm, I'm looking at a frozen picture. And then you may restart uh, your remote desktop software, try to get it to come back. But until then you did not know that you were not looking at a live picture. Well, as long as you have something like this flashing on the screen all the time, if that picture were to freeze, the flashing would stop. And that would let you know, hey, I'm looking at a frozen VPS. Now what else can happen? What we're going to do this week is, if somebody commented and asked me about it, now this will just tell you whether your internet connection is still good to the VPS, but this doesn't tell you where the connection between that platform on that VPS and your broker's server is still up and going. Now you know that down here you have this little red and green thing normally that will tell you that you are connected and if you pay close attention you can look and see that yes that is connected. But let's say you're not sitting there at the computer watching the VPS. Well what you don't realize is sometime during the night the VPS or maybe the broker had a problem with their server for whatever reason, the VPS was not connected to the broker server. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some more code to this that will, uh, when this gets disconnected from our broker server, we are going to have it pop up an alert on the screen and show us the time that it disconnected. And then also, when it reconnects, we're going to have the alert pop up on the screen, not a message box now, an alert window pop up on the screen and tell us that it reconnected. So in this way, if we wake up in the morning and we say, hey, why didn't it take this trade? There's going to be an alert box still on the screen that says, oh, this thing was disconnected for four hours during the night and we'll know it. That's what we're going to do in this video. Plus, Due to the fact there are so many things that we can flash, we can flash the open high low close and now with a new version, we just got a brand new version of MetaTrader last week and uh, what was it, 985 that quickly changed to 988, I think is where it's at right now. Let's see what we got here before I find out that I'm telling you wrong here. 
Yes, we're at 988 right now. And another thing that it will let you do now is it will let you turn uh, the scales on and off uh, programmatically. We couldn't do that before. And of course, the big thing that they're excited about is that they added a chat window here where you can actually chat with other traders in your platform now. I don't know if you've noticed this up here yet or not. But anyway, now you know what we're going to do. We are going to set it so that we can tell when the VPS has disconnected from the broker server and we're going to write an enumeration that drop down box that will let us give you an example of what we're talking about here if we wanted to put let's say a, a moving average on this chart and we can drop this down and choose which type moving average we want to use well that's what we're going to do with our little heartbeat indicator. We're going to make it so when they drop it on the chart they'll have a drop down choice of what you want to flash. Do you want the open high low close to flash? Do you want the bid line, the ask line, the scales, the date? We'll get to it in a minute. So get at your keyboard, uh, put this off onto the side, open your meta editor and type along with me. It'll be easy, I promise. Okay, well, this is certainly isn't going like I expected it to. Uh, as you can tell by looking here at the chart, it is now the next day from when I just recorded that introduction. You can see the, the euro has moved down about 100 pips here. It's Friday now. And I've got a lot of stuff to do today, so I don't have the time to make the full video that I was wanting to make for you guys. So I'll make a little shorter one, although it'll probably be long enough. And uh, what we're going to do is do the part I told you about how we can select a drop down list where we can select what we want to flash on our chart. And one of the interesting things is that in the last week or so, we got a new version of uh, MetaTrader that allows us to turn on and off the price scale and the date scale. And if you, if you look here at the chart set integer, let me bring this up. Go to the enumeration here, the chart property integer enumeration and you can see these list of things that you can uh, show uh, they're all true or false whether they're showing or not and you can see there's the bid line the ask line etc etc the period separator lines the grid the volumes but you notice what is not in here is the price scale and the date scale let me show you something now the help file has not been updated yet but if you were to just get this far and it starts making suggestions you can see now we have something called chart show date scale and then on down here chart show price scale so now we have some more options of course we'll still have the volumes and show trade levels and all of that stuff can flash too so we'll put a few of these into a drop down list now as I mentioned before it's much like when we select to put uh, moving average on the chart uh, we can uh, choose what parameters we want from these drop-down lists here and those are enumerations that are stored that are built into MetaTrader where we can drop things down that's the kind of thing that we're going to do when we get ready to drop our heartbeat indicator on the chart and it comes up with the parameters there's going to be an input here where we can select we want the bid line to flash the ask line the scale whatever so let me show you how we're going to do that by making an enumeration okay so I know some of you guys out there who are not familiar with coding are saying okay Jim Mr. Smarty Pants what's an enumeration already speak English all right an enumeration is an enumerated list of things, things that have names that really represent a number. A number. Let me give you an example here. And we can use something called the define here. Define. Come on, Jim, type. Let's say instead of saying dozen, we want the computer. When we say dozen in our code, we want the computer to see a 12. Or if we say half dozen, we want the computer to see six and so on and so forth maybe uh, what other kind of dozen can we have here we can have a 
a baker's dozen, right? You, you guys know what a baker's dozen is? That's when the the baker gives you an extra an extra donut or whatever. I can't talk and type at the same time. A baker's dozen is 13, and of course, two dozen would be 24. Now, what we have just done here is when we compile this, hit the compile. Now, anytime in my code that I write dozen, the computer is going to see 12 or half dozen or six or whatever. Let me show you here. Let's let's put a little comment on the chart here. Comment. All right, and we're going to put in here all those things. We're going to put in dozen. And I better put one of these in there. So it's a little space between these numbers. Dozen, half dozen, uh, baker's dozen, and two dozen. You know what? I need to make that one word. I can't have it broken like that. Let me fix that like so. Let me compile that. Now, what I want you to, when I hit the compile button, due to the fact that the indicator is already on the chart, you can see over here in the comment, we now have 12, 6, 13, and 24. So the computer sees the number behind the word. And when you use the define directive here, you can assign a phrase, uh, an actual string, to a word. In other words, uh, like you could say website you could define the word website to represent the string you know www.something well I'll show you here it's easier to show you than tell you define website equals uh, com. okay compile that and take, turn that into an E It'll work a lot better if I do There we go. Now if I add website to this list here, like so, and I compile it and remove the equal sign out of it. There we go. Now you can see up here where we just typed website, it actually types out that string. Now that's the thing about the define directive is that you can use a word to represent a string. In an enumeration, a word only represents a number. It's an enumerated list. Okay, so let's take our little set of numbers here and let's turn it into enumeration. So this is the way an enumeration is written. It starts off with enum, and what we're going to do is create a new data type, and we'll call it eggs, okay? Or I guess it could be donuts, but we're going to call it eggs. And that is a new data type, just like integer, double, whatever. When we're going to declare a variable, we're going to declare it of the eggs data type, as I'll show you here in a second. So we put a set of brackets in here, and there's a semicolon at the end. And within here, we're going to put uh, all of these things here. Let me just copy these as quickly as I can. I'm using control C and control V here and I'll insert the commas and things here in a second I could just you know quickly go through all this and cut all this out but I want you guys to be typing along with me to have time to do it as well okay so what what this is going to say is a dozen equals 12 a half dozen equals 6 a baker's dozen equals 13 and two dozen equals 24 okay put my little equal sign in here now we have just declared an enumeration let me compile it make sure I didn't make any mistakes and of course I did no, I didn't delete all these first okay get a website off of here in fact I can delete all this out of here now Okay, we compile this, and uh, so what we're going to do is now that we have our little enumeration made here, we're going to set us up an external because you see right now when we 
go to change parameters in here, there's nothing in here that we can really change except the color. There's no input here for anything. So we're going to put an input in here. Input of the data type eggs. And the name of this variable is going to be count, right? So, and we're going to declare the variable count of the data type eggs because we just created a data type called eggs now. And we're going to say two dozen right there. Now, do you notice how that popped up? Let me, let me start here. If I type half, you see it knows uh, that those things already exist right there. So I have set the count, the variable named count of the type eggs to two dozen. So if I were to just comment eggs in here right now, compile this. Well, no, it's not eggs, it's count. The variable count. I'll compile that. And you notice that I am commenting onto the screen the number 24 because I am commenting what the count variable is is set to right here and it is of the eggs data type I realize this can twist your brain a little bit here but the point I want to make and show you here is that we have created enumeration and that creates a, a special kind of input for us let's go back over here into our indicator into our heartbeat indicator now we have an inputs tab which we didn't have a moment ago and we have we see our variable called uh, count which we can change what says here but this is an enumeration which means we can drop it down and we can select from any of these things right here if we select dozen you'll see this 24 over here due to the fact that we are commenting count to the chart count becomes 12 see how that works that's pretty cool huh I love enumerations I love playing with them making especially in making settings for the uh, code I write uh, it makes it neat to have drop-down lists to select things uh, whenever you're putting an indicator on the chart and we can go in here where it says uh, count we put a comment here it says uh, how many eggs like so now what that does is over here in the parameters again when we drop this on the chart it, instead of saying count, it now instead of saying that count right there, now it says what's in the comment. How many eggs? We say we want a baker's dozen, and it comments 13 onto the chart. So the enumeration creates that drop down effect that we're looking for here. Now let's turn all of this into how we select what we want to flash because we're going to get into a problem here because we're really, we right now we have the open, the high, the low, the close. And if we write a numeration that's just got open, high, low, close, we have to assign it a number. What number is open, high, low, close? Well, I'll show you how to figure out what number is really behind this. Because remember, this comes from an enumeration. This big enumeration right here has all of these words that are assigned. And you'll also notice that an enumeration a parameter is usually in all capital letters like this and with underscores spacing them apart but this is what we are using right now is the show the show open high low close which is right here now we are seeing this what is the number because we know this is enumeration each one of these has a number assigned to it. how do we find out what number that is well it's really simple let me show you Okay, so are you ready to do a little hacking? Are you ready to see what number is behind these words like chart bring to top? Now we know this is enumeration, so there's a number that the computer's really seeing when you type in chart bring to top. How do we find out what it is? You think you know? I bet some of you do know. Right here we have chart show open high low close. What if we wanted to comment into the chart chart bring to top what do you suppose would happen if we compile this and tell it we want it to comment onto the chart the chart bring to top like so if 
you look over here you can see it says the number 35 is the chart bring to top what about the uh, chart open high low close here control C control V we'll compile it and we can see that that really is number 12 so we can go through here uh, the chart show grid right here you type that in here and we can see that the number let me move that over a little bit we can see that the number behind chart show grid is 17 so we can go through and I have gone through and found what numbers correspond to what things and now the interesting thing is I, I didn't have the opportunity to click on something here and uh, like how to show the price scale how to show the date scale but now that I know that those things exist, if I go in here and say the price scale will bring it up for me, see? Now when I compile it, I can see that it says that is 37. The date scale, it's ATE, that is not ATE, that is ATE, is 36. Okay, so now that we know how to get the numbers, we can write us an enumeration and uh, we will call it a flash object. All right, that's going to be the name of our enumeration. We're going to declare one called flash object and we're going to put in it that, uh, you know, we're going to say like grid equals 17 or whatever it was, uh, ask line equals a number. That's what we're going to do. Now that we know how to get the numbers. So let me clear some of this stuff out of here. Mm. Just ate some spaghetti. Maybe, maybe I didn't get any of it on me. Okay, to be perfectly clear, as Obama says, I, as to what we just discovered about the fact that chart show open HLC is really a number 12. Let me show you here. If we put 12 in here, like this and compile it you can see that we still have our open high low close flashing over here we also discovered that show the grid was number 17 you remember that Let's change it to 17 we'll compile it and now the open high low close will stop flashing but the grid will start flashing so when we type in those uh, enumeration parameters what we're really type what the computer is really seeing is one of these numbers now, one of the problems you'll get into with this, which we'll have to we'll have to make a fix for it here, is that if I go back to uh, 12, if I go back to the open, high, low, close, and I compile it, you see that time when I hit the button, the grid was off at that moment. If I go back and turn it back to where we're flashing the grid, and if I change it back to 12 if we go in and change our parameters at the wrong time you can see that it can go back to flashing the open high low close and at least the grid turned on and we didn't really want the grid turned on to start with uh, what do we find out the price scale was what was it 37 or 36 or something like let's try 37 and see what that was I forgot 37 turns the price scale on now the price scale is important right we need to see it even if it is coming and going. Well, if we were to go in there and change parameters while this is flashing, we could be left with our open, high, low, close uh, flashing, and we don't have a price scale anymore. Now, normally this wouldn't be a big deal if this was the grid or the open, high, low, close. The grid, you can turn it off, off and on with Control G. Or you can go in the settings of your chart, and you have things that you can check and uncheck. Show up in the old high, open high, low, close, the ask line, period, separate, so on and so forth. But there's no place in here to turn the price, the, the, the scales, back on once you've turned them off. You have to basically close the chart and start over again. So we're going to have to put some code in here so that when we load the indicator, it looks to see whether the grid was on or off before we started flashing it so that when we remove the indicator it goes back to the way it was before we messed with it especially on these scales because we've got no way to turn them back on now that we've turned them off so we'll show you how to do that but first of all let's make our enumeration here 
All right, so let's transition what we've already got written here over into what we want. As I said, we were going to we were going to make an enumeration called the flash object. So let's just uh, we'll put F A O B J like this. Okay, flash object, and we'll change this to where it says um, grid just so we can make sure that this works like we think it's going to work grid equals 17 uh, what did we say open high low close was uh, oh my close equals 12 wasn't it um, but we'll just leave it at that for the moment we'll go with those two things right there and then we're going to declare an, an input of the flash object type and we'll name it X We'll keep it simple, and we'll set it to uh, we'll set it to grid, and this we'll put in here what to flash. Okay, so you see what we've done here. Now we're going to comment onto the chart here, x our variable x. All right, so let me go down here and make this set the integer to x okay so right now we know that a grid is 17 we have declared an uh, variable called x of the flash object data type we have it set to flash the grid we're going to comment up here in the corner it should start flashing 17 for us and down here when it sets when it shows and unshows things it is going to show and unshow 17 which is the grid. Let's see if it works for us. Now you see we have a proper a problem because it says improper enumerator cannot be used. Why? Because we have a um, a variable declared in here that is of the flash object data type. And this is chart set integer. So it wants us to put an integer in here. Now we know behind that is a 17. But we are going to type cat type cast this into being an integer like so now it's happy because it's getting an integer and you can see now our grid is flashing okay so let's go up here let's bring up our indicator just to make sure we've got what we think we've got now we drop this down you can see we have the open high low close and depending on when I hit this button uh, will depend on whether we leave the grid on or off and that time we left it off but now you can see the open high low close is flashing let's go back to the grid now the grids flashing let's go back to the open high low close and I'm going to intentionally hit it while the grid is off and you see it turned it on as soon as I hit it. So now we're stuck with the grid on, which we can push Control G to turn it off and on. So here's what we need to do. We can fill in all of our other things that we want to flash here in a minute. But before uh, we fill all of that out, we've got to find a way that when we start this indicator, we want it to look at the grid or the... Um, open high low close or whatever it is that we are selecting to flash we want it to look at that object <clears throat> and get the information of whether it is turned on or off at the moment in other words if we drop this on a chart that has the grid already turned on maybe we like the grid and we decide to flash the grid when we get on and remove our indicator we want to leave the grid on however if you're like me and you can't stand to look at the grid whenever we drop the indicator on the chart we wanted to look at the chart and say oh this thing has got the grid turned off so I need to remember when I deinitialize to leave it with the grid turned off leave it in its present condition so let me show you how to do that now first of all this is going to have to happen this check to see whether it's turned on or off is going to have to happen as soon as the indicator initializes so it's going to have to happen right here in the on init function so what we whereas we use down here the chart set integer to set the grid showing and not showing we're going to use the chart get integer to find out 
it true or false is the grid on or off at the moment or whatever X is is it on or off at the moment so we're going to use chart get integer like so not double integer and in that chart get integer this is going to be for chart 0 which is the main chart we're going to get the same thing due to the fact we're wanting an integer we're going to type cast this as an integer now what that is going to do is as the on it comes up it is going to go get the current state of whatever we have selected it is going to return a true or a false and this needs saved when we find out whether it's on or off we need to save this and we don't need to save it in the on init function because as soon as the on init function finishes whatever is stored in memory is gone so up here at the top we're going to create a, a place for it to hold in its memory because remember the stuff up here in the global area at the top of the file stays in the memory as long as the indicator is on the chart so we're going to declare up here a variable called original state and now remember this chart get integer is going and getting a boolean answer true or false is the grid on or off so this is going to be of the bool type and we're going to call it original state now if we don't set it to true or false it is going to default to false however that is going to be quickly changed by the on and it function if it needs to be so down here we're going to put in here that the original state is equal to whatever it is when we start the indicator you follow me so far and this original state up here if we checked uh, the grid and we have the grid turned on as we uh, initialize the indicator it is going to check and say yes true the grid is the original state of the grid was it's true it's turned on so when we leave and we take this indicator off of the chart if we happen to remove it or if we happen to change that we now want to flash something else the every time that you change that parameter and click OK it reruns the on init file and it also runs on D init if you have one and we do not have one yet so let's put one in here because as we unload the indicator and then reload it as we unload it we want to restore the grid to its original condition before we got here so we're going to put us in an on d init function which is of the uh, void type on d init and in here we have a constant integer reason the brackets in here so as we remove this chart on DNA it runs it deinitializes the indicator off of the chart and we want it to set our grid back to the original condition right so as this indicator leaves we're going to have it to set it chart well in fact I can copy it right here bring it down here as we leave so to speak we want it to set this to its original state like so now as we drop it on the chart it's going to check in the on init function to see is it on or off right now is it true or false it's going to save that in its memory when we unload the indicator off of the chart it's going to restore that thing that we had flashing to its original state before we got here Let's see if this compiles yes it does so now uh, one of the things that we can do <laughs> let me put this in here right now we're just commenting onto the chart uh, what we have selected so let me add to this a little bit uh, I'll say is set to and then I'll put original state in here okay 
compile and you can see over here it says that 12 is set to true what that means is the open high low close is set to true now let me um, and you can see the grid is on right now so if we change to the grid let's go up here indicator to list heartbeat let's change to the grid and you'll notice we start flashing the grid and it saved that it is set to true okay so let's go back out of here again and as we leave and go start flashing the open high low close it will see leave the grid set to true as it deinitialized and then reinitialized very quickly now let's let's turn the grid off this time before we switch to flashing the grid we're going to start with the grid turned off so now let's go back up here let's edit it and we'll say we want to start flashing the grid now now you notice when it starts flashing the grid it says that it was set to false when we started so therefore now when we switch to something else I think you know what's going to happen by now it is going to leave it turned off when we leave and start flashing the open high low close okay so we have that functionality working for us now let's add in all of these other things into our enumeration all of our other choices of things that we can flash okay from my previous investigation I know that the bid line is 13 and the ask line is 14 volumes is 18 period separators is 18 move this over a little bit the uh, date scale is 36 and the price scale is 37 let me change this open high low close to capitals so it'll look better compile that now when we check out our indicator we bring it up here we've got all of these things now that we can flash like let's say we want to flash the bid line and there we have the bid line flashing and if we change to the ask line let me zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see there you can see the ask line flashing let's see some of our other choices here the uh, price scale you notice the price scale is gone I really need to reload this chart but because it's going to come up and and say that it was not turned on when I started this but you can see we're flashing the price scale and no matter how hard I try to catch it with it turned on it is it is going to return it to the uh, state that it was in before I started so now the date scale down here at the bottom it will flash it instead but let just to make sure let me close this chart open a new euro chart and uh, unload our indicator the heartbeat onto the chart and it's loaded with the default setting which up here again is 17 grid okay so now let's go to the price let's, let's change it to the price make sure that we don't lose anything when we change back and forth we're going to go to the price scale 
and it knows that as soon as we do that that it is set to true now we don't have to worry that we're going to turn it off or we're going to change to flashing something else and we're not going to be able to get our <clears throat> price scale back again excuse me so let's change to uh, let's change to the volumes we haven't done it yet have we volumes there we have the volumes there you go guys so was it worth your time to watch this was it worth a dollar to watch this you know I'm making these uh, YouTube videos and it takes you know this is taking a couple of days out of my life uh, to mess with this and do with d do this for you guys and what I want you to think about I have an account at patreon if you don't, if you all are not familiar with what patreon is let me bring up my page here and I've got 20 patrons right now who are together collectively contributing $32 every time I make one of these videos so what you can do is you can go down here and you can choose to throw in a dollar uh, was this a, was this worth a dollar to uh, learn this information that I taught you today you can pledge to donate a dollar every time that I make a video uh, for YouTube and you can set a limit like a maximum of three dollars a month so if I produce four videos in the month you will still only get um, hit for three dollars a month but some people are putting in two dollars for each video some people are one dollar but it's something I'd like to, for you to at least consider if you think these videos are worth a dollar maybe they're not worth a dollar to you if you're not really wanting to learn this but anyway I wanted to put that out there I haven't mentioned patreon in a while but I do have a patreon account and I would certainly appreciate uh, anybody that wants to become a patron of mine if I could get enough patrons to where I was making uh, you know some of these people it's unbelievable what they get for making a video for YouTube on their patreon account but anyway just something for you guys to think about if you would like to uh, learn how to program in this programming language if this has just been a total uh, confusion to you then you may want to go to learnmql4.com and sign up for the video course it's a video tutorial course and you get a subscription to this website where you can go on this website and view all the videos that I have that takes you completely from knowing nothing about programming to where you're actually programming your own expert advisors so the whole the whole course you know is outlined all through here uh, all the prices and everything here the whole program from beginning to end is two hundred dollars it comes in four different levels so that you can just subscribe to the first level, see if you can handle it, then upgrade, whatever you want to do. But I wanted to make it so you could just start off for like $40, $39.58. Get your feet wet, see if you can understand the basics before you go any further and invest any more money in it. $39 is too much for you. You can actually go to get a Kindle book that I wrote, $2.99 Kindle book, and go through it and get kind of a taste of what uh, my teaching skills are like and whether you can really grasp this or not. So give it a thought uh, get the ebook sign up for the course for the first level of nothing else and uh, think about becoming a patreon patron I sure appreciate it if you're not subscribed to this channel if this kind of things appeals to you by all means uh, hit the subscription button and subscribe to the channel remember to like and share uh, this video around with your people that are trying to learn to program or just want to know more about Forex trading uh, for that matter and uh, that really helps, I think, on my numbers on YouTube. So, well, my creator content numbers. So anyway, I thank all of you guys. I've got to get out of here and do what I was supposed to do instead of make a video today. Everyone have a good weekend. Hope everyone had good trading this week. I've put my trades up, several of them up on Facebook. You know, follow me at facebook.com forward slash learnmql4. You may want to go over there and look at the charts that I'm posting and how I look at a chart and what I'm looking for and all those things. At any rate, maybe I'll see you back here next week. Pip pip.